Are you familiar with Gerald Silente? He's not exactly a fortune teller, but instead he is what we call a trend forecaster. He published Trends Journal, all while coming up with several predictions about the financial market and other important events. Recently, his topic for discussion has been about the American economy. More importantly, what is happening and what will be happening in the foreseeable future? According to him, if this economy remains stagnant with the ever-changing lifestyle of the world, it's on the road to hell. We have lockdowns every now and then, businesses such as retail, food, service, or whatever it may be are closing their doors for good. We might see some rise and dips altogether, but the general trajectory is heading downwards. It looks like the first pages of the Great Depression are being written, and no, we are certainly not here for it. So why should we trust this man and his supposedly predictions of the market? Does he have enough evidence to back himself up? What exactly is he trying to tell us? Welcome to Financial Market TV. If you're new to the channel and enjoy content like this, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Also, please don't hesitate to share your comments down below and give this video a like. Let's get started. First of all, Salente did mention that one of the issues is the trade deficit of the United States. If we were to go back more or less 10 years ago, we can see how the US always had a deficit of somewhere over the 45 billion mark. And when we fast forward to 2020, it wasn't so bad. During the first few months, of course, we all know what happens next in 2020. The pandemic hit the country and to everyone's horror, their deficit plunged lower. Naturally, when you are having trades with other countries, you would want to profit from it, obviously. And of course, you would be aiming to profit a higher amount compared to the ones that you spend. But somehow, the US doesn't really achieve this concept so much in the current situation, and maybe ever. And here comes along the effect of the pandemic, further pulling their deficit. This is something that Salente often hints to when he is trying to introduce what he calls economic hell on earth. The country has always been in a deficit, and it has been made much worse during the pandemic, uninvited damage to society. But apparently, the government is leading us to believe that they have a solution ready for that situation. The feds are assuring us too. What will they do? They will continue to push more and more money into the economy. The people would still be getting their stimulus checks, even right to their front doors. Even those businesses with poor credit rating don't have to stress out, all they can do is purchase junk bonds. There's also cash at hand available, but Salente and a lot of economists don't really buy into that practice. Salente quoted, Why would anybody, I'm only speaking for myself, I don't give financial advice, why want this digital trash backed by nothing and printed on nothing when they keep printing more and more of it? Well, he's not wrong. If you're trying to be smart with your investments, they don't really do cash. They either put their money back on the stock market, which is one of the reasons why stocks are so high right now. They also put it into real estate, making prices of these houses increase as well. Another risky factor when you continuously print money is inflation. Of course, when you have a lot of money, you tend to spend more. And from the basics of economics, the more people buy, the higher the prices of goods become. So when we look at it long term, the sustainability and practicality of this method is pretty questionable. So no, printing money does not help at all. Instead, a better solution would be to let the economy and outputs grow. That is a way you can generate money and eventually help you pay off your debts. But in recent times, the growth of the economy does not seem pretty. It's actually curving into a negative. Salente adds that another reason as to why we are bound to hit poor economic times is because of interest rates. We have mentioned that during the pandemic, so many businesses have shut down from one business to another as well as government to another. They are all going into lockdowns at different times. So why does the interest rate stay so high? It's all the cheap money that they keep injecting into the system, the negative and zero interest rate policy. So the feds actually have some strings that they can pull to control these, First is the printing of money, which we are all aware of, so we don't really have to go into details with this. Second, and actually the major thing that they can manage is controlling the interest rates. So they either turn down the interest rates into a lower measure, just low enough to actually help the economy. Low interest means it's cheaper to borrow, thus helping put more money into the economic system. Or they can turn it up high, just enough to make sure people don't borrow too much money and keep things in order. Now, looking at the numbers, if we look through the past 30 years, their interest rate has been hanging around the 5% mark. But again, fast forward to current times, there has been a big difference. It's basically zero, flat at the bottom. What does this data tell us? 
It means that the feds have lost the authority to stimulate money into the economy with low rates anymore because they have already hit as low as one can go unless they cross the negative mark, which is not a good place to be in. This time, we're jumping back to 2008 to the point that we call the Great Recession. Now, during this period, how did they manage to stimulate the economy back up? They dramatically changed their interest rates from 525 all the way to 15%. And voila, this boosted the economy back up and recovered from a serious economic depression. So we can now talk about the similar issue we have today. Sadly, we can't even do what they did back then. Because how can we lower our interest rates when we are basically at a zero? It's pretty pointless. So Salente mentioned a few things. We have the countries that got hit really badly by the pandemic in terms of their economy, and also the ones who got lucky with some minimal damage. Let's go over what he explained. He said, every major country is going to have negative GDP this year. Oh, except one, China. You know, as I said, the 20th century is the American century. The 21st is going to be the Chinese century. So I think we should take a look at the actual data of the country's GDP and see if this makes sense. If we go through the figures for 2020, Salenti is surprisingly very much accurate. Scary. For the second quarter of 2020, the numbers show that most countries are actually at a negative. Big countries such as Australia, India, France, and of course the US and even the UK have a negative GDP growth. And what was the last country standing above the negative mark? Yep. China with a 3.2% GDP. You can even take a look at Q3 and you see no difference. Generally, China still surpassed the rest of the bigger countries while everyone else suffered such an economic impact from the pandemic. And if you're not aware, there has been a bit of beef between China and the US when it comes to economy. They've always tried to outrun each other on who can be the biggest and dominating this century. For a long run, it has been the USA, but now the numbers show how China is just catching up as fast. So what we know now is that this pandemic has actually helped China. In terms of looking at the economic rate, no one can really object to it. So we guess this is just an interesting thing to know. But let's not get way ahead of ourselves. Let's jump back to our main focus, which is the United States and its economy. Like we mentioned, Gerald Salente isn't exactly rooting for the U.S. economy when you break it down into its figures. And we'd like to believe that a lot of people don't either, especially recently. If you looked at the economy, you would have predicted a big market crash happening alongside today's situation, just like what happened in 2008. But apparently, the stock market has turned a blind eye to these economic warning signs and has been continuing to go upwards. So in this case, Gerald is asking, why? Why in the world is everyone ignoring what's right in front of their eyes? Why is the equity market still going upwards as if there's no economic crisis lurking? Although we all know that this system is flawed and rigged, manipulated through printing of money and with junk bond loans as well as zero interest rates. And people, of course, would be asking, what is Salente doing to prepare for all this? Well, one of his strategies is actually buying gold and silver. You can see this become a bit of a trend by these economists and forecasters. He was recently asked if he was still continuously buying gold and silver or if he was shifting to another direction. His answer, he is still rooting for gold and silver. And if we look at the Trends Journal, it states that in June, silver prices were going to outweigh gold in prices. So he obviously has a taste for those brilliant metals. And we know why. These metals are only set in definite amounts. We can't just print them continuously like we do with cash. They are very limited. So in a way, these metals ought to hold, if not increase, their value over a long period of time. They also stay stable even in tough market conditions, making them somehow symbols of safety. And it's not just Gerald Salente. We have forecasters like Jim Rickards and Harry Dent who agree that gold and silver are the best assets to own in order to have an economic security during a market crash. Now, you've got a lot of professionals and educated people actually foreseeing tough economic times, but you also have those believing in the latter, such as the famous Warren Buffett, who thinks there are other possibilities. It's either the market would actually bounce back instantly, or it can be flattened long term. Basically, a lot of possibilities are there. So it's not important that we zero in on one. The strategy is to be prepared for whatever outcome. You want to be prepared in case the economy surprises you with great and likable conditions, or you want to know what the heck you are doing once it comes down to economic hell. You can take their advice and focus on investing gold and silver. However, it's also a good idea to keep looking for great deals in the market, just like Warren Buffett, who sits patiently and keeps an eye out, but 
he's not gonna go on a buying spree. Rather, he is just securing his position. Better safe than sorry, they say. Another thing is it's not entirely bad to keep some cash in your portfolio. That could be the thing that you actually need during a market crash. That's how you buy stocks at their bargain prices. If you don't have cash, you simply can't buy stocks at their best bargain opportunity. So you probably can come up with your own strategy. Remember, there is no guarantee on a crash and there's also no guarantee on a bull market economically. So how are you doing your next move? Is it going to be Buffett's strategy of buying and holding stocks with a nice supply of cash? Or do you want to do it like Celente and Rickards and instead keep your hands on that gold and silver? Let's hope you just come prepared. I guess whatever happens, we'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching the whole video. Again, if you're new and like this type of content, subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to leave a comment down below and hit that like button. Also, click on the notification bell to get updated on our weekly uploads. See you in the next video.